Welcome to the Painting Lines Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things tennis. Join Eric and Aiden in their discussion for updates on news and pop culture, and from hot takes to betting, they've got you covered. Ready? Play. So last week we talked about the dominance of the big three, and this week we're going to be looking more into the future and discuss who we think will win a slam at some point in their career. And yeah, uh, in this list, we're going to be looking at people that haven't won a Grand Slam yet. So we're going to be not talking about people like Medvedev or Alcaraz who have already gotten one. While we think that they will get more in the future, we're just looking at guys that haven't won one yet. Thanks for clearing that up. So with that being said, Aiden, first. First guy I think uh, is going to win one, I think, is a pretty obvious choice. It's Stefano Tsitsipas. I mean, he's already been to multiple finals. He's been like a set away from winning a Grand Slam. And at this point, I feel like it's just a matter of time. I think it's almost like he's just waiting for Djokovic to retire and then he'll win. He'll win his first. Uh, I think it'll be a pretty quick thing after that. Do you he, think he's mentally cut out? He, I think, he, well, he definitely has the skill to do it. The mental game is the entire question. And I think that's the whole thing with, Djokovic retiring I think once I think it's almost like a mental block where it's not necessarily that Djokovic is that much better than these guys it's just that when they're playing against him they it's hard for them to get over that mental block of oh my god I'm playing Djokovic in this Grand Slam final how am right. I going to beat this guy right. and so I think if if he if once he's not playing against him in a final I think if he I think if he plays against another person from sort of his generation in a final, he will get a, uh, a Grand Slam. Relatively I hope soon. he does. I'm not going to put him on my list, but I hope he does get one. Yeah. He's been so close, man. And I think I think he could even get multiple after Djokovic retires. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. What so first on my first? list, I'm going to go with Kasper Root. A little bias here because he's Norwegian, but okay. I think he does have the skill, definitely has the talent. Kind of like Tsitsipas, don't know if he's mentally ready. So he's also been in two Grand Slam finals, one against Djokovic, one against Alcaraz. Sorry, not Djokovic, Nadal, Roland Garros. But I just don't think that he – I think it's going to come, like you said, when Djokovic and you know Nadal retire. But um, I think he's got what it takes. He's got that very stoic mindset. I think he needs to be more killer, though. Like, he lacks that fire, and that's kind of what he needs to win a slam. I think it'll come, but I don't know if you've noticed, in these slams that he's lost, it almost looks like he doesn't really care, you know? Like, he's just happy to be there. That's what you're saying. Like, yeah, it seemed like Alcaraz was in the uh, U.S. Open, was really out there to go out and take it, and it right. seemed almost like Rude was just – it almost seemed like he wanted to just wait to see if the moment was too big for Alcaraz – and it wasn't. Now Alcaraz went out there and just mm -hmm. like, took the match. I think his first slam is going to come on clay around twenty twenty five. Rolling Garros. That's my bold prediction. Do you think? Do you think after Nadal retires, do you think there will be another sort of king of clay that emerges and starts dominating in the French Open? I don't think there's going to be an outright king, but I think Brood is going to be one of those dominant clay players as well as Alcaraz. Okay. Yeah, Rude just he has a similar playing style to Nadal, where he has a big baseline, like heavy topspin, whereas Alcaraz just loves those little drop shots, and I think that's that's what works on clay. Hmm. All right, who's yeah. next on your Second list? Second for me, I have uh, the man with all the talent in the world, Nick Kyrgios. Hmm. I mean, it's hard not to recognize how much uh, like skill he has for tennis and he makes he makes the game exciting but oh, one of the sure. reasons he makes it exciting is because he could lose to literally anybody on the tour he i mean he he shows his skill he's beaten all three of the big three when they were great players and it's hard to argue against the fact that he could win a slam but his mentality is so hard to judge because mm -hmm. He's so fiery that you don't even know whether whether it helps him or hurts him sometimes. Right. 
because sometimes no, I, sometimes I think that him venting and letting all this anger out does help him. But then other times it just goes over the top and all of a sudden he's distracted from his playing. Right. I mean, I just don't think he cares about tennis enough to win a slam. You know, like he only plays half the year. He doesn't have a coach. He kind of just goes out there to have fun, which, hey, all credit to him. I wish, you know, more players were like that. But I think in order to win a slam, you have to stay focused the whole time, not just when you want to. And I think he's just too much of a wild card. Yeah, understandable. But I mean, you have to you have to consider the fact that he did make it to a slam final and he's one of the players that hasn't won one because he lost to Djokovic Joker, in the final. Yeah. So if you look at that that he would have if you if you think about it, he could have maybe won the tournament if it wasn't for Djokovic. So after Djokovic's retirement, you you could see him maybe winning one. Do you think if he got a coach, he would easily win a slam? I think it would have to be a coach that he really respected because I think I think that's the big thing. I think he needs to have someone that can tell him, hey, you can't – if you're going to win, you can't have these outbursts anymore. And I think that would have to be such – it would have to be like Federer or like an all-time great or some, someone like that, like Bjorn Borg, mm -hmm. where he, they're, they're known for being like the cool-headed person. And so if you, if you look at them – if if he's their coach or if 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 they are his coach he he would have to be able to be like okay i know that this person can get it done in these big tournaments i'm going to listen to what they have to say so do you think the main role of the coach in this situation would be mental rather than strategy cuz like we we can't deny he's got the talent but is well, the purpose of the coach to keep him grounded or do you think it'll help his strategy too. I think it's similar. Well, I think obviously they can bring a uh, aspect of the uh, strategy to it, but I think the most important aspect for him is the mental game, because it's kind of like Sitsipas. It's it's the mental breakdown is what stops them from winning a bunch of tournaments. Mm -hmm. And so I think if they he can get a coach, if either of them can get a coach that can help them to get over their mental barriers, then I think they'll uh, find a lot more success. Yeah, no, I, I hope he gets one. I'd like to see it. Who's number two on your list? Number two, Tommy Paul. So my my hot take, he's gonna be the first Amer American to win one. I love his aggressive playing style. You know, he's got a big heavy forehand and he's not afraid to come to the net. I think that's that's what's gonna get him there. You know, a lot of players love to just sit back now not play as aggressive, just try to win with their strokes. I think he's got the perfect combination of it, and I see him winning in the next three, four years before Taylor Fritz. What yeah, what what do you see in his game that you think that will make him win it before Fritz or Tiafo or someone like that? To be honest, a little bit of luck, you know, like he makes deep runs in the tournament and he he won't play the best tennis, but he gets it done. Like he'll you know, squeak out a five setter with a couple of tie breaks in rather than, um, you know, playing, playing super hard the whole time. He knows when to conserve energy. He's smart about it. He's also super fit, you know, like he's young. He's one of the most athletic guys I think on tour. So you can't really get much past him when it comes to like stretching him along the court or hitting drop shots. And I think that takes a toll on the opponent. And he's willing to grind down his opponent. Um, th that's what it takes in slams. You know, like you have to be ready to play for three and a half, four hours sometimes. And he's got it. I think uh, if you follow him on Instagram too, see his workouts, like he is grinding out there. And I think that that hard work will eventually come to fruition. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that that's definitely a big thing about the winning a slam is knowing it's it's a lot more strategy of of effort almost because it's real it's really difficult to go out there and put everything on the line for five sets every single match but if you're smart about it and you know your conditioning level and you know about how you're going to play then you can use that really to your advantage mm -hmm. and speaking on mentality he's always calm and composed you know like you never really see him have any outbursts 
And I think that also helps too. Like he's willing to just move on to the next point. He doesn't dwell on previous mistakes. He doesn't let the opponent get in his head. If anything, I think him doing that takes a toll on the opponent too. Yeah, no, and that's the thing. I, I think if I think even if he do, the opponent does get in his head, if you don't show it, it's really advantageous to you. Mm-hmm. I lo- since he is very calm and composed, I love when he has those little like celebrations and like you know what I mean? It's just pent up there and he doesn't like to show his emotion, but when he does, man, like oh, yeah, it's great. He lets it out. All right. So, how well, about my you? My next guy uh is Yannick Sinner. Really young dude, uh incredibly talented. I remember he was winning he he kind of just burst onto the scene a few years ago and was just all of a sudden in like the top 20 out of nowhere. And I think, to be honest, he could be a future number one in the world at one point. I think he could. I think it w- will be tough for him to take uh, number one over maybe an Al- Alcaraz, but I think Alcaraz, if maybe he he gets injured or something, I think Sinner could be a top five player that s- steps into that number one spot for a while and I think if he develops his talent well enough I think he could be a very comparable player to Alcaraz yeah even in addition to Alcaraz I think Tommy Paul almost too like I when I see center play I see another young athletic you know not afraid to get dirty type of player and he kind of flies under the radar like he's very up and down um you don't really hear too much about him like he'll make his deep runs in tournaments and then the next one he'll early exit so hopefully if he can keep it consistent then i do see him getting a slam yeah i think he's also one of those players maybe that sort of followed a djokovic model style of playing where it's not the most exciting like it's 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 an an elegant level of tennis but uh, it's not necessarily oh he's hitting drop shots every single play he's not playing like bublik Mm-hmm. But he he just gets it done because he knows he has very solid all around game. Right. Yeah, I've seen him play uh two years ago in the US Open. It was him and Zverev. And I was looking forward to a great match, maybe a five setter, but Zverev took it in three and I was a little disappointed by that. Um like I said, he he's a little inconsistent. I'd like to see him prove himself by making it further in a grand slam tournament well how how old was he at that point um it was two years ago so how old is he now 21 so this, he was 19 when that happened oh man no wonder he moves excellently yeah so it's it's one of those things where at, at 21 like he has so much potential to keep getting better right and i think he could develop more too like you can tell now that you say he's only 21 like he kind of has that 21 year old body like he's not really in the physique that the older like 24 25 year old players are in you know like once he gets a strict training regimen starts you know doing more i guess weight training i think he could use it he'll be he'll be a menace to be reckoned with yeah i agree because you can see alcaraz alcaraz is very different body type despite them being pretty much the same age yeah, I mean, I mean, Sinner's definitely a much more slight, and Alcaraz is more of a, uh, like, muscly, I guess. I mm-hmm. can't think of the right word for it, but... No, he's got a built stature. Exactly. I think Sinner's kind of lanky. You Honestly, I think Sinner is kind of more what people think of when they think of a tennis player. Sort of lanky, thinner. And Alcaraz has more of just an athlete body where he's just strong and he's fast and he hits the ball real hard and so. mm-hmm. no definitely all right yeah. speaking of zverev i i'm putting him next on my list um here's a guy that has made it to a final um us open against team he was up two sets two sets to love couldn't get it done i would love to see it he is he has gone through so much adversity, broke his ankle, Roland Garros last year. And I just want to see him get one. I think he's another guy that needs to mature mentally. 
because he's got the skill like he was projected to be the next the next best thing a couple years ago but he just hasn't done it need to see him need to see him get a couple wins um i also think this won't come soon i think he still needs time to mature but i don't think time time isn't an issue with him i think he'll only get better the older he gets he's he did not peak yet yeah i mean in in that in that u.s open against team i mean he did get a little bit lucky i mean neither one of them had to play djokovic in that tournament but the the thing that really stood out to me about that was it was he does need to work on his mental not just the strength like oh he gets mad at himself when he misses shots he needs to work on sort of the fortitude to to be better than than himself and not overthink things because mm-hmm. if you watch that that final in the last set i i believe they went to a tie break or yeah a, a tie break in that last set and it was you watched him serve all i remember was watching him hit like a second serve and it went in at like 60 miles an hour. <laughs> i know i've and, also seen him double fault like three times in a in a game yeah he's just he's just so afraid to miss those shots that he just sort of just dinked it over mm-hmm. and i think to me that 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 final was really a, a situation where neither player wanted to lose but no neither one was trying to win right it's kind no, of like I can what see we that. were talking about with the rude situation earlier rude was kind of just trying to go into the final and not lose and Alcaraz went out there and won it Mm -hmm. right I think Zverev he can do a lot of damage with his backhand I think that's his best attribute like a consistent hard backhand well I mean also it's just one of those things where like if you double down on your strength if, if if he can be confident in his serve like it's going to be really advantageous to him mm-hmm. but what do you think about his muscle shirts i think he needs to start putting sleeves on <laughs> you don't think he, you don't think he's got the uh the guns for that i think he needs to hit arms a little more and then maybe <laughs> yeah i mean jj wolf style yeah it is it is a uh it's a bold choice yeah yeah he needs the nadal arms back in the day yeah exactly do you need the pirate pants too <laughs> oh Right. Man, what a style. What a style icon Nadal was back in the day. Yeah, I mean, he he came onto the tour and he was like, I'm I'm like 16. I'm going to wear what I want. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. All right. My, Who's uh, next on your list? My next guy is uh, what I think is the, the next big guy in American tennis, Ben Shelton. Ooh. This guy, I mean, he was playing in cha- – he's been playing in challengers – in the for the last year since he's been playing in pro tournaments and then he's played in maybe he'd played in maybe three or four big tournaments and all of a sudden he comes to the Australian Open and makes a huge run to the quarterfinals i mean getting in the last 8 at a major at 20 years old is absolutely insane yeah and i think that everything he's shown he's such he's a very exciting player to watch he really kind of crowds the baseline based on what i've seen and that makes it that really sets him up for an interesting style of play where he he takes aggressive shots and he also when he's when he gets his opponent tries to put him on the defensive he'll go for an even more aggressive shot mm-hmm. he'll almost go for a winner off of a, a a harder shot from his opponent right and that massive serve also helps too yeah he i mean pumps it out 130 140 yeah that, i mean can't hurt him <laughs> uh, big lefty too yeah the, the lefty the lefty advantage is also pretty interesting on on the serve because you just get such a different a different look it's unique though i feel like playing lefty against lefty is weird because there are so many more right-handed players Mm-hmm. that even for him, I, I wonder if it's if it's odd for him to play against a left-handed player too. But I mean, I'm assuming he's pra- he, he's practiced that so much. Yeah, I mean, I could see it. The advantage is there because the spin that comes off, it's opposite of what you're used to. And yeah. 
when you're hitting that heavy too, it's, it's kind of hard to track. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting though. Cause I know that, uh, Federer used to always, he would, he would like spend so much time training against left-handed players so that he could try to beat Nadal. Like I've heard stories of like, Oh, he would, if, if there was no left-handed player for him to hit with, he would play with like a junior player at these tournaments, but like as practice to play against Nadal. Wow, I wonder if you ever hit with Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, probably not, but maybe. No, no it, Shelton's dad. He's a he's the coach at University of Florida too, where he plays college. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, he won the NCAA tournament last year. Got a bid to the U.S. Open. Early exited first round, but that was an amazing match. I was actually there. Oh, okay. thanks for the ticket, by the way. Oh yeah. On on that opening Monday. <clears throat> One of my buddies, I was watching a different match on the outside courts. He's like, you got to get over and watch Ben Shelton. He's in a fifth set tiebreaker. And I'm who's Ben Shelton? Oh, young, 17-year-old uh, American, University of Florida. Um, he's, he's killing it right now. Like, get over there. So I went over there. It was probably the best match I've seen. It was intense, too. It was one of those little courts. So everyone's packed, full American crowd. American player, so the energy was just amazing. Too bad he couldn't squeak it out, but yeah. he'll he'll definitely get past the first round next year. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. And who's your who's the last guy in uh, your list? Last guy on my list, Taylor Fritz. I think oh, he, second yeah. American. Yes, I'm American heavy. Um, I think he he's got the fire. Like he has that you know killer instinct where. He's going to get it done. Um, he's won Indian Wells last year. He's made it pretty far in the most recent slams. I think this is another little uh, prediction of mine, but I think he and Tommy Paul are going to battle it out Agassi and Sampras style. I think we'll have another great American rivalry. That's a That's a bold prediction, I'd say. With one caveat. Without the combined slams they're not okay. gonna get they're not gonna get the uh the sampras 14 and the agassi eight that yeah i mean if they I, did, I think three or four a piece if they did that'd make them like all-time greats but i mean three or four pieces still a lot mm -hmm. there's so many guys that that could could still win that aren't on either of our lists so it's yeah. it's yeah, yeah. and we don't know how many that we think Alcaraz or Medved ever going to win, which right. could be a good amount of. So it's 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 tough to say they could they could win. I think I think they could sneak out one or two. I think past that it it they'd have to be pretty dominant players. Mm -hmm. And I think speaking of that fire that Fritz has, another bold prediction I have is Tommy's going to win the first slam, and then Fritz is going to he's not going to like that. He's going to want to get one too. And I think those two are just going to have a nice, a nice rivalry going forward. as yeah. top American. Well, I think, I think Fritz has it right now. Fritz is ranked higher than Tommy Paul. And I think it's interesting. I think, I mean, I think American tennis really has a pretty solid looking future because there are a lot of guys in the, in the top, top, uh, like the top 10 Americans, I mean, are probably all, potential grand like not not necessarily high likelihood but on their day they can beat pretty much anybody right you, i right. mean if you look at someone even like tiafo or jj wolf or someone like that if they're playing to the best of their ability it's going to be hard to beat them mm -hmm. no definitely all right let's get into segments here what's new what's going on in the tennis world uh my uh big thing is uh Coming f straight out of Indian Wells, uh, we're seeing a turning back of the clock. Vavrinka and Murray <laughs> both made it through to the third round, which is really exciting for me. I mean, I always, I always remember watching those players when I was younger, and it's always cool to see when players that haven't had success in a while are winning matches at big tournaments like this. Yeah, it's a little blast from the past, huh? Yeah. It, 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 I mean, especially Vavrinka, because Murray's been playing pretty well recently. But Vavrinka's kind of been doing a lot of early exits, and 
it, it seems like he's really in the the extreme twilight of his career. Like you'd probably say Murray's in the twilight of his career because he's definitely winding down, but Vavrinka's almost on his way out. And mm -hmm. to see Stand him get, the man to see him get a, a couple of uh, uh, wins is pretty cool. I know. Also love a guy with a one handed backhand. It is yeah. fun to watch. Such a such a pretty shot. Yeah. All right. Sure, you know, Djokovic denied entry into the U.S., so he's pulled out of Indian Wells and Miami Open. That's unfortunate. Um, I think the logic there is very flawed. I think. Especially I think Miami. they're kind of. He's getting the short end of the stick. He he really is. But yeah, it's I mean, too bad. I mean, uh, I probably shouldn't say anything political. Yeah, we're not going to get into that, <laughs> but. Another uh, thing I saw actually this morning that I want to mention. Um, so when Medvedev won in Doha last year, or not last year, last week against Rublev, very classy winner speech, you know, um, <clears throat> really, really complimented Rublev in his playing style and then took a little shot at Stefano Tsitsipas, who apparently a few months ago in a press conference uh, when asked about Andre Rublev, said said that he was a man of very few, few skills, and that he wasn't really worried. Medvedev brought that up in his speech, saying, "Oh, another player mentioned that he has very few tools in his arsenal. I disagree. I think he's one of the most talented players on tour. Hopefully, he can beat that player many, many times in the future." So the Stefano Tsitsipas and Daniel Medvedev beef continues respect honestly respect to medvedev for for standing up for his boy like that yeah his fellow countrymen too yeah i mean not a big fan never mind <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there. hey opinions um, to yourself yeah uh but yeah i mean do you think that the u.s is gonna let give a Djokovic a pass for the u.s open well i think the so the requirement expires in may so he oh. should be good by the time he okay. goes. So that's why I think the logic is flawed. So after May, yeah, he's fine. He's not a risk anymore. Yeah. But until then, oh, <laughs> they're like, dangerous. oh my god, it's such a massive issue. <laughs> yeah, uh, the that's only crazy. The only thing he's dangerous about is beating up people on the court. Yeah, accidentally hitting him with a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we not want to be a ball kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> against Djokovic or with Djokovic. Yeah. Certain players, yeah, curious too. You got to watch out. Yeah, he might just hit the ball randomly, <laughs> throw his racket at you. Yeah, Sitsipas also ripped one into the crowd. Remember when he played curious? He was so frustrated. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's a tough, uh, it's, right. it's a it's a tough one to be at those matches if those guys are freaking out and having a tantrum. <laughs> All right, should we get into bet of the week? Yeah, sure. Who are you taking? Uh, my bet of the week kind of builds off of my uh. My new my new uh, info in tennis is I'm going Murray plus 135 versus Draper. Ooh. He's the underdog, and Draper does have a high level of tennis. I mean, you if you see if you watch Draper play, he can beat a lot of good people. He he earlier this year uh, he was playing in the in in Australia in the Adelaide International too, and he beat. Kachanov and he beat Tommy Paul. So two bit pretty Ooh. big wins. And then he lost to a guy that really isn't ranked even nearly as highly. So I think if he's on, mm -hmm. it so it, it could be it could be his, but I think Murray is more likely to win. So I that's my bet of the week, plus one thirty five. Gotcha. Okay. So I took Alcaraz to reach the final, put this bet in on Friday, got plus 300. Um, so apparently I don't know this, but this was Alcaraz's first hardcore tournament of the year. But I still, I'm confident he'll reach the final. Yeah, because um, I guess I guess the, the Mexican Open was, was hardcore, right? But he pulled out of that. Yeah, he pulled out. He pulled out. Yeah, um, exactly. I, I'm still confident, though. I, I like this bet. Good uh, Good value there, too. The plus 300. Um, <clears throat> didn't say win, just said made it to the final. So I like yeah. that one. Yeah, there's another bet I was I wanted to take. It was for an American to make it to the final. I think that one was plus 500. Okay. I don't have faith in the boys just yet, but 
give them another year and I'll be I'll be making those type of exactly. bets. Exactly. All right, let's get into match of the week. Uh okay, my match of the week is uh two of the Americans we've already talked about. Uh Fritz and versus Shelton. Fritz actually is the the defending champ at Indian Wells. And uh so this is a, a, a early match it would be an early exit if he lost. And Shelton came in was super exciting. I mean, he took the first set and it just looked it, it looked like he was just con- completely controlling the match at that point. Mm-hmm. And then he was so aggressive early on and it seemed kind of like Fritz was just weathering the storm, just waiting out uh Shelton's sort of aggression and then you kind of saw Shelton start to falter in the second set and then Fritz sort of took over and took control. Yeah. So it was no, pretty cool to like see. Like I said before, Fritz has that fire. Once he lost the first set, I feel like he had the internal conversation with himself. Like, hey, come on. You know, you're not yeah. you're not letting that happen again. Get get out there. I think he's I think he's very good at that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he did a great job. So my match of the week was Sitsi Pass versus Thompson. Uh one three sets, two tiebreakers. Thompson's kind of a guy that he hasn't really broke out quite yet. Um, and to see him do it against Sid Tsipas was, you know, unfortunate because I'm a big Steph fan, but I think Thompson played really well. And this will actually be good for Sid Tsipas because I think he'll take this loss very personally and go into Miami in a couple weeks with, you know, fire under his butt ready to go. And then that's when he'll make a real run. But no, a lot of great hitting in that match. A lot of exciting points. I I really enjoyed watching it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, seeing a match like that, like you, you'd like to think that it's gonna light a fire into Sissy Bus, but it, it's hard to say because you look at that and you're like, well, I thought that him losing in a Grand Slam final might light a fire under him, <laughs> and didn't really do that much. Yeah. I mean, he lost. He, he literally lost in in a, in a Grand Slam final two months ago, a month and a half ago. Yeah, but he's he's, he's been playing. He's been playing well since then. I guess, but this is this is really a a big tournament for him to be. This is a big tournament, yeah, and he sh- he shouldn't have lost this early. I don't know. I I like when there are upsets though, because it keeps it interesting it is it does keep it interesting but you also kind of there is an expectation to see the top ranked guys win and Mm -hmm. when they're losing like it seems like Sitsipas sort of is just his consistency was really lacking oh yeah all right and that's the show if you're not already subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube at Painting Lines Podcast. Feel free to shoot us a DM or email us any questions or thoughts at paintinglinespodcast at gmail.com.